Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. Uh, this time we're going to see an unfolding technique for which I was inspired from uh, Paul Clement's headphones breakdown video that he uploaded a few days ago. And if you haven't watched it, I really recommend you to watch it. He makes a masterful use of the Cinema 4D tools and uh, he has plenty of really great ideas and uh, he uses them to make a really polished and great looking final TV spot but this uh, breakdown video is one of the best breakdown videos that, that I've seen so at some point he um, creates the surface of a headphone by unfolding polygons and I made an example here of uh, what we're going to do so this is the effect we're going to achieve so let's go to cinema and start. Let's start by making a polygon and it's a little big at first. Let's select both the width and height and uh, make them 50. Hold control and hit enter to make both of them. And let's go to the armograph menu, hold alt and drop it under a cloner. Now the cloner automatically offsets on the Y axis. So let's bring this to zero and uh, make our z-axis 50 because that's the width of the polygon now we can make as many as we want but let's make it 10 so our viewport will go a little fast for the tutorial and uh, a problem that we'll soon realize is that uh, if we try to rotate it the polygons rotate from their center now this will not help us a lot for the unfolding if we have a floor we can see let's select the cloner again that they're going through the floor and in fact if I bring the video here and uh, let's observe that their pivot point let's see this polygon over here their pivot point is at the edge of the object so let's go back and disable our cloner and hide the floor and uh, let's make the polygon editable and hit L or click this button to enable the axis mode and we're going to bring the axis back to minus 25 we can type it here on the coordinates manager to bring it back to the edge of the polygon let's disable axis mode enable the cloner and I'm going to also hit NB to enable the lines on the viewport so if we try to rotate now we can see it's rotating around the edge and if I enable the floor we can see it's no longer going through when it's rotating so that's great let's disable the floor again now let's give it some thickness let's go to the simulate menu and uh, hold alt to parent it under a cloth nerves we don't want any subdivision just some thickness here and uh, we can still try that it's working great now how to make it into a disk let's select our cloth nerves and parent it under a second cloner and by default it's linear let's change this to radial we want it on the XZ plane which is a horizontal plane and we can sort of create a circular shape here but we can have all these intersections so we need to fix that disable the cloner we want to make it uh, you know becoming um, more narrow near the one end and I'm going to use a deformer to do that let's bring our taper deformer if we play with the strength parameter we can see it's uh, uh, working on the y-axis so let's bring our rotate tool click the red axis and hold shift to quantize the rotations so we will go exactly at minus 90 to align it with our Cloner. Now they need to be under the same uh, parent in order for it to work. So bring it under the cloth nerves and let's select our cloner. We can see that the, the size is 500. Let's make it 500 on its Y and let's bring it here on the center which will be 250 and we know the width is 50 
and about the height we don't care about the thickness just bring it a little lower now if we use the strength to 100 we can see that it works but it has this curvature that we can disable from the curvature parameter so now let's enable our cloner and we can see it's upside down we can fix it directly from the cloner but I think it's more proper to show you how to change the pivot here um, I'm just going to use a null object and bring the null object to the point right at 500 so I'm going to parent the whole uh, first cloner with the cloth nerves and everything under the null so now it's like the pivot of this whole object is at this point let's name this um, slice pivot or just name this slice actually and if we enable our radial cloner we can see that uh, it's now uh, correctly you know rotated but they still intersect so let's bring a radius to zero that's perfect now let's increase our count until you know it fits as much as good as possible I think around here and it's not perfect you can do the math if you want to make it perfect but I'm just going for the easy way right now and in fact if you render this you won't notice much so let's um, disable our taper here on the viewport with the uh, lights because it's a little distracting all right now we have both our cloners we have our slice how do we animate this let's make a plane effector and uh, by default we don't know which cloner to put it well the correct answer is the nested cloner because that's the one who has the individual polygons the other cloner has whole slices so go to the effector list of the nested cloner here and drop the plane effector and we see that it uh, kind of raises them and we don't want to raise them let's go to our plane effector sorry and disable the position we want to rotate them and it's the position P here and we can see it's working so let's enable the fall off make it spherical and make it a little bigger with the scale great but now they all rotate at once and we can see that we can see all of them as well now the plane effector is very good at hiding clones and the way to do that is go to the parameter here and go to the color no to the other scroll down and enable visibility and for the visibility to hide them you need to reduce the maximum value here of the plane effector to 50 and now everything that is inside the red circle which represents 100 percent strength for the plane effector will be disabled so now using the falloff we can rotate the clones the visible clones and let's go to our falloff here let's make it a little more um, rigid let's bring it to 35 percent and let's go to our uh, parameter and play with the rotation until we see something um, that fits I think around 360 is good enough so if we play with our scale now we can see that exactly when the clones are visible what kind of rotation they have so now we kind of created this folding effect but it all happens at once and it's not convincing at all so we're going to use a random effector to randomize let's select our nested cloner that we know is the one who we need to apply the effectors to and make a random effector let's go to the parameter disable the position what we want is to use a random effector to randomize the way that the plane effector affects the clones and we're going to do that with the weight transform and to do what it does 
let's see from upside down because we have the cloth nerves here let's disable our plane effector and select the nested cloner here go to the transform tab and enable weight now we can see the weights of the clones so if I enable if I increase the weight transform on an effector we can see how it affects them it starts to color them where yellow is 100% and red is uh, 0% so we can see that uh, by default the random effector has the same weights in every uh, circle and this will not be useful for randomizing that's because it randomizes every clone but then it is cloned radially but we can change the random effector mode into a world space mode such as turbulence to have a more random effect and now we can see it's kind of subtle but we can uh, play with the min-max values to make it uh, more obvious since there is no negative weighting we can increase the minimum to zero and we can decrease the animation speed so this will not be distracting and we can also adjust the scale a little bit to make it more random I think around here is enough so let's enable our plane effector now and go to our nested cloner and disable the display actually so we can see that it does nothing in order to see the effect of the weight we need to go to the fall of tab and decrease the weight value here and now we see that it does again nothing and that is because the plane effector on the nested cloner let's go to the effector list is executed before the random effector so it cannot read the weights of the random effector it, it only reads zero so let's bring it after the random effector and now we can see the randomized effect we have let's try to play a little with the scale here and maybe these are a bit too random we want to, to have a little order in this so we can play with the weight value here to blend how much randomness we want and then now if we use the plane effector at around 50% we can see that they're random enough but they're also um, orderly you know they have this rule that they're going towards the center that's great so we have this effect already created and it's controlled by the plane effector here by the scale value let's make it easier to control by making a simple 0 to 100 percent slider so I'm going to select my uh, setup here and hold alt G to group it and name it um, unfolding polygons and I'm going to the user data here and add a user data let's name this unfold and um, let's make it a float slider from 0 to 100 percent press ok we have our unfold value here and we want to drive the planes effector scale parameter so let's right click here go to the animation and you cannot see it there is a command set driver so we click that let's expand this go to our plane effector go to the scale here let's make it as big as we want for the zero percent so around here all right so it's a uh, 1600 let's make it 1700 and right click on it go to animation and we have two set driven parameters one absolute one relative so this is not going from one from zero to 100 percent so it's not absolute it's relative and when we click it it creates an expresso expression with a very simple setup here is these two parameters connected via a range mapper to map their values so we want the zero percent to be 1700 percent and we want the 100 percent to become actually scale zero right let's bring this to zero sorry so when our slider here will be zero percent 
the scale value will be 1700%. When the scale value, uh, when the slider is 100%, the scale value will be 0%. And if we try it here, we can see that we have all the control we want from a single slider. Great. And now, as a final touch, we can uh, animate it. Let's add a couple of keyframes. And we can uh, go to select our nested cloner, go to MoGraph, and add a delay effector to add some uh, overlapping action. Let's go to our parameter, no, our effector here, and change the mode to spring. Let's hit play. And we can see that very organically it's working. So actually the delay effector also had a side effect here. It changed the timing of the plane effector. So now our slider is already at 28% and it just started. And so we can change a little the Expresso setup. Let's take a look at our um, scale value just before it, uh, the clone starts showing up. So it's at uh, 1000, uh, around 1300. So we can reduce this to 1300. So now it will start around zero. Let's hide the plane effector, it's a little distracting. And let's see if it's working properly. Well, we can still see a clone. So let's try to raise it a little bit. The delay effector can have this kind of side effects because it's trying to blend values. And we can still see this. Maybe I'm going to decrease the randomness a little bit. All right, maybe at 60% here. All right, so I hope you will find this useful. And um, see you next time.